Peter, I want to hear what your pitch to the people of Wigan would be and whether it's actually any different to what David Gork says, what, w w whether we can distinguish between the position of the parties on this. Well, for a kick off, I don't think austerity has worked and we've got low levels of productivity has, has been set out in the piece. Investment is pretty dreadful. Um, skill levels are poor. Right. And, and what realm, do you do about it? Sorry to interrupt. I do well, want to well, get to I what you do the, about it. Well, OK, well, the issue on that one is, is that you need investment. You, to, to get levels of productivity up, you need investment in capital and labour. And that whether that's in education, whether it's actually in physical infrastructure, that's what we actually need. And what we've got is a woeful lack of investment in that. And that's what you need. It's, the key to this is investment. Right. And how much are you investing in education? Because I'm looking at your spending commitments. You've got a, a, you've got a lot more for schools, in fairness, a lot more for schools. Yeah. Is that going to make a difference? You've got a, a bit more for skills, but a lot of that's on, you know, EMA and things like that. Is that, is that what you're saying is the difference between you and the Conservative Party in what you'll do for Wigan? Is that, is that it? Well, we're talking about a, a £25 billion investment in education from... Um, in a sense, from the cradle right the way through life. So it's investment in early years, it's investment in secondary education, it's investment in further education and skills, which has taken a terrible battering. It's investment in university and generally in lifelong learning. Does that include skilled people? Does that include the 11 billion you're spending on yes. student grants? So really, yes. but getting on behalf of the total budget is 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 on students. Can I just ask, are you expecting more people to go to university as a result of your free tuition? Well, I think it's going to be a mix. I think some many people will go to university, but that's the Are whole you expecting point. more? It's quite simple. Well, I, well, may more, well, be, if, well, if you're well, spending yes, 11 I, I, million and we get I, the same output, I, I it's I not would, going to be no, helping would, a lot, is it? I would expect them to go more, but there's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a, a refresh. It's a different look about an education service. It isn't just focused on right. university students or primary or secondary. It's got to be a holistic approach over a long period of time to our education service. And what we've had is an atomization and a fragmentation of our education education okay. service. So while Rome burns in terms of uh, education, we've got stuff about grammar schools, we've got the issue about, uh, okay. about academies, I, I want to go back free to... schools. If the, whole, the point I'm trying to make is that until you get a, a, a coherent education service from cradle to grave virtually, we're just going to continue down this path of lack of skills. Right. Isn't there something in the fact that you just need to spend a lot more on schools? You can't just talk about skills. The one thing Labour have got that is different is a few billion next to the skilled budget, which you haven't got, David. Well, in, in terms of the uh, manifesto, actually, we're putting more money into schools than we'd previously set out. Yeah. But I think there are, there are two important points about investment here. First of all, if, it's, if we're talking about government investment, if you like, uh, you've still got to maintain that credibility with the markets. If you're going to be borrowing that money, you, they're not going to lend it to you if, you, if they think you're going to pay it back. The second point is, if we're looking at private investment, you know, companies, businesses have got choices all around the world. You have got to have an economy that welcomes investment, that is business friendly, right. and you won't attract investment in the UK when there are many, many choices for businesses if, for example, you're making our tax system less competitive, right. which is what so, the Labour Party so, is proposing. So it's, it's, it's very interesting because you are actually going back to, if you like, the previous Conservative view that you need a deregulated, strong deregulated, business friendly economy. But I, I suppose the question people might ask is, why should we believe in interventionism, which seems to be what you were starting out with, from a party that has been sceptical about intervention for the last 30 years? Why I don't think that's expect I, you to do it. I think there's a, there's a caricature. That, yeah, that there is no contradiction in saying you want to be business friendly, you want to attract private investment into the UK, you want to have a tax system that is an asset to bringing investment in, not, 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 not a liability. But there is also a role for the state, and that comes in, you know, in, in not in uh, supporting failed businesses and so on in a kind of 1970s uh, industrial strategy. It's a modern industrial strategy that focuses on, you know, what do areas need? In some places it is about skills and training. In some places right. it is more You're about research and development. In other places it's about transport. Well, a little uh, bit of everything, yeah. Yeah, and, and also an important hard point. Hard to know, really, whether yeah, it's what, going to work a, or what effect it But has, also a, it? It's, it's, a governance it's, point as well that we shouldn't miss. And one of the things that we have done, you know, we've just had elections for metro mayors, for example. Right. We are getting, you know, 
know, proper devolution to the area so people can respond can I, to those local needs. Can I ask you to hold that? Because I just want to spend a few minutes with you, Peter, on the issue that, uh, that David Gort raised about it is eye-watering how much you are expecting to raise out of British companies. I mean, it's 19.4 billion on the corporation tax, 1.6 billion on offshore companies, 4 billion more or less on corporate tax reliefs. You've got the stamp duty proposal, that's 6 billion. You've got your avoidance measures, you know, let's call that, it's 7 billion, but let's call it three from companies. It is basically 30 billion quid or so that you're taking out of corporate profits. Now, have you researched or looked at or done the homework on what the effect of that will be on investment? Well, look, the issue at the end of the day is we need investment in the country and everybody has to pay their fair share of taxes. The Tories are cutting corporation tax down to, what, 17%. When we have it at 26%, right. it'll still be lower. It'll still be lower than it was Understood. in 2010. Have you done but, any but, research but, on the yes. effect? You, remember, we raise about 50 or 60 billion in corporation yes. tax. You're adding 20 billion plus a load of other corporate taxes to that. That is quite a big increase. It's not impossible, but it's a big increase. Have you researched the effect that will have on corporate investment? Well, well look, yes, corporate investment will continue as far as I'm concerned. Corporate, corporate bodies only... currently have about, well, just a minute, corporate bodies currently have £500 billion sitting there not being invested. And what we need to do is to try and move that investment on. So it's about a private and a public but... partnership in all of these issues. So it's not have just you... about the state or the private sector. It's about both pushing and pulling companies, together. Companies invest about, I don't know, call it 200 billion plus or minus right. a year. You're taking 30 billion out of companies and you don't know whether that is going to affect well, investment. No, I didn't, no, I didn't investment say that. Is, investment is the cornerstone no. of your policy. No, I didn't say that. I said it wouldn't impact upon right. investment. And what can you tell me what evidence you have to assert, to, to, to support that assertion? Have you well, done some research? Well, 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 the assertion is this. You have to look at all the other economies we've just been talking about in the G7. Their levels of tax for corporations are higher than the British levels, and they still have huge amounts can, of investment. Can I just so, check? So it's there. Can you be sure that £30 billion, which would be probably one of the biggest tax increases we've ever known, can you be sure that that wouldn't affect the pensions of people who are not part of the richest 5%, but just perfectly ordinary people, that wouldn't affect pensioners who rely on their savings or their ISAs, can you be sure that if you just whip out the equivalent of £500 for every person in the country from companies, that that won't impact ordinary people? I don't believe it will be because the whole point about the investment is to grow the economy. If you grow the economy and GDP goes up, you get more tax. I mean, it's, a, it's straightforward. You invest into the economy, you get a return on your investment. Uh, Peter Dowd, thank you very much. Let me finish with you, David, a, a few more questions, if I may. 